Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. Today what I want to do is go through all of my Color It supplies. I have a number of coloring mediums and um, a few of their Color It coloring books. Uh, many of you know the Color It brand. They have many things out there. They are a little bit pricier than your, say, Creative Haven books, but their quality is second to none. And like they say, you do get what you pay for. <laughs> So what I thought I would do first is show you my coloring mediums and then I would show you the coloring books that I have and we would do a color and chat. The first thing that I want to show you is the color it markers. And yes, I do have to put names, labels on all of my uh, cases of my supplies. I'm like I said in past videos, I am OCD about things like that and color charts and whatnot. Um, in a future video, shortly, I'm going to be showing you my color chart swatch book. It's in a binder, and yeah, it's it's quite OCD, but I love it. So these are the color it markers. I apologize if there's shadow whatsoever. I had to turn on my light underneath the desk here. Again, it's sunny out here, and my desk is next to the patio door and so the sun is streaming across my desk and yeah that wouldn't have been any better so um, these are the markers they do have color you can see that without the they do have color names and numbers um, let me show you the color chart for the markers okay uh, it lists you know, all the color numbers, color names, and then I swatched out the colors. So this is what that looks like. Okay. Very, very nice markers. I really, really like these. Again, Color It products are awesome. Awesome, awesome. And they all come in really, really nice cases. This is a really heavy-duty hardback case. So this is one of the very, very few times... <laughs> that I do not put my uh, supplies in separate um, cases, you know, the, the pencil cases or, you know, you know what I'm talking about, um, because they are so nice. These even have uh, slots in the bottom that you put your marker in and it holds them upright and they don't fall all over. So really, really nice set. And we will be coloring with these in the future too. Okay, and they just zip up the side and around the front. So, really, really nice set of markers. I will be leaving links to all of these supplies down in the description. I'm not sure if you can get all of them on Amazon. If they're available on Amazon, I'll leave that link. Otherwise, you can get all of this stuff from the Color It website itself. And if it's not available on Amazon, I will leave a link then to the Color It website for that particular product. The next set is the Color It pencils. And let me get that color chart here. Okay, the Color It pencils, again, comes in a very, very nice case. Again, with their Color It logo. You even get a little sharpener. I don't use this particular sharpener because Ann now has me addicted to the M&R sharpener. <laughs> this isn't the best quality, which is surprising for color it, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't use this one. But as you can see, very, very nice pencils. Let me take one out. It uh, does have, again, a color number and a color name. Here it is, Hello Pink. They have really cute colored names on their products. I just love it. Um, so very, very nice pencil. The one thing that I noticed with these, though, you'll notice it especially as you color with it. And I noticed I haven't colored a picture with them yet, but I noticed it when I made the color chart. They're quite a bit narrower. They're quite a bit thinner than your typical colored pencil. I did not look up with the millimeter of this particular pencil is but yeah it's it's definitely thinner than our prismacolor our polychromos holbein's what have you um so that's you know the one thing i don't you know i, I guess maybe you don't get quite as much lead in there because i'm not sure what the the circumference of the lead is either but so yeah it is uh 
set of how many was in this 24 I think and this is not the biggest set this just happened to be the one that came with the deal that I ordered I believe there I think there's 48 in here I think their biggest set is 72 if I'm not mistaken but uh, this is the color chart that I have which is very unusual for me to not have the biggest set because I do have complete set itis to the max. I mean, I've been afflicted horribly, and I guess there is no cure for it. So, I guess I'm going to have to live with this disease. But, uh, you can see they swatch out very nice. Um, I do not know if they're oil or wax base, but they do lay down very, very nicely. My color charts for pencils, you're going to notice I always have three columns, and it will be light, pressure, medium, and then dark pressure. So I kind of have an idea of what it'll look like um, in coloring books when I color with these. Now granted, this is just on, you know, this smoother cardstock that I print out all my coloring charts on, and each book is going to color a little bit differently, but, uh, you know, depending on the toothiness of the paper, but this kind of gives me an idea of the colors and sort of how they'll lay down. So that is the Color It colored pencils. Next will be their, they have um, watercolor brush pens. And this also was included in that kit. Again, nice case with their logo. These do, what's, what's so nice about these is you can get refills. So um, along with their gel pens, they have their gel pens, they have refill sets. Unfortunately, you know, there's not a gel pen set around that you can get just a specific color refill. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice for those of us that use up, you know, really like, you know, specific colors like me with my purples or some people really are into their blues or maybe because of what you color, you use up your greens and browns, you know, whatever. It just would be really nice to be able to order one color gel pen. But for these watercolor brushes, you can. You can order a refill, and these are completely refillable by just twisting off the end, and it shows you here. Um, you just pull off the end and refill it. So the um, color chart for these is this. And it has, you know, for a smaller set, it has a nice variety of color. You go from your yellows, oranges. doesn't have a real good true red. Um, the regal red is very maroonish, very dark. Woody raspberry, yeah, is kind of reddish, but it's got definitely a pink undertone to it. It's got a few purples, number of blues, a few greens, a couple of browns, a lighter brown, dark brown. A light gray and then your black and the black is pretty much a true black it's it's pretty nice so yeah that is the watercolor set now I saved the best for last because if you know me you know I love my gel pens and especially my glitter gel pens so I'll show you the regular now I'll show you the glitter uh, set first Look at this case. Can you see that? Their glitter gel pens come in this standard color it case, but the glitter gel pen case is all glittery and shimmery. So you know instantly you can tell that, even though, of course, I have to label it, you can tell it instantly from the variety pack of gel pens because this one is your typical black case, and this one's glittery. So yeah, I thought that was a neat touch. Color It thinks of a lot of details to their uh, products. So, this is uh, the glitter set, and you have a very wide variety of colors. Again, in a very nice set or case. Now, what I absolutely love, and this is the first set that I ever seen this on for glitter gel pens, and I doubt you're going to be able to see it here on the camera. Um, but every single gel pen, both in the glitter set and that variety set, has a color name and a color number. Have you ever seen that in gel pens before? I haven't. <laughs> and I have a lot of different gel pens. 
Um, so yeah, because they have a name and a number, of course, I had to make out a swatch chart. And I made out a swatch chart for just the glitter gel pens. Now, one thing I was really upset about, and I had gotten these first before I found this deal that I bought at the end of the year. So I actually have two sets of these because I already had bought one and then one came in the kit that I bought. But when I got the first one, I was a little upset because there was no true red in here. The closest thing that came to it was either your brick or your hot pink, but it really wasn't a true red. And I felt that the ivory and champagne were so close together, they really didn't need to include both of those. The crystal and platinum also are very similar. So I thought they could have maybe done without a couple of these colors. There is no true orange in this set. So yeah, I, I kind of felt that their color selection could have been a little bit better in the gel pen, the glitter gel pen set. But let's move on to the other set, which is all the four different types of gel pens. You get a number of glitter gel pens in this set also, along with your metallics. Then you get a number of pastels and then some neons. Now, when you look at the color chart, you are going to see, and I don't know if you can see or not, but many of the colors for the glitters pretty much fill in what is missing from the glitter gel pen set. So you do have some beautiful additional yellows. You do have a couple of really pretty oranges, a couple of reds. You got additional pinks, purples, blues, greens, some really nice browns, and a Millennium Black, because that was another thing that I didn't like about the regular glitter gel pen set, is there was no black, and I do use black. So then there are some beautiful metallic colors. The pastels, well, the as anybody that has colored with gel pens knows, pastels are quite a bit scratchier then say the glitter gel pens and that's why I like the glitter gel pens so much because they're just so smooth and easy to color with. The metallics also, the one thing I don't like about the metallics is they're very opaque so they go over the black lines when you're coloring and I just don't like that. The pastels, yeah, they're they're pretty but I felt they could have put rather than you know two oranges and a, you know and a pink and a purple the white is not super transparent. You you know you would be much better off using your other uh, opaque, you know your Sakura or your uh, ah what's the name of the other one that I've been using so long. Um, so I don't know if they absolutely needed the white. Um, definitely didn't need the two oranges. I I think they should have put in a pale blue, maybe a pale you know pastel green in here. So, but what are you going to do when you only have, what is it, six of them in there? The neons colored very, very nice. And I felt the colors were really pretty. And here they did include a green, a blue, a purple, pink, orange, and a yellow. So you got a nice variety with the neons. But all in all, very, very nice sets. Like I said, when you, you put together these glitters, along with the whole glitter gel pen set itself, you have a very, very nice set of glitter gel pens. And like I said, you can order refills separately. I do have my other set of the glitter gel pens here too, um, because like I said, I have two sets. Okay, let's go through the Color It coloring books that I have. The first one, and many of you have probably seen these, so I'm not going to do a complete flip through. Um, this is the Mandalas to Color Volume 1. I colored many out of here when I first received my um, Tombow uh, markers, and I had a lot of fun with them. The only problem with the Tombow markers is, of course, they are water-based, so you get streaking um you know with the markers 
But uh, yeah, very, very pretty mandalas. And they're a little bit easier than volume two, in my opinion. This is volume two mandala uh, coloring book. You get your blotter page. And what's so nice about these books, for anybody that hasn't seen the color it coloring books, again, they're a little bit pricey, but they're spiral bound at the top, first of all, which is nice for both right and you left-handers out there. Um, you don't have to worry about going into the spine or anything like that. Very, very hard, heavy, well, not hard, but heavy cardboard cover. And then... They give you a, this belongs to, but then they give you a couple of pages. You could use this, but they do give you a blotter page. So if you're working with markers or even gel pens or, or you know, pencils or whatever, and you don't want to um, dent in your next page, use this blotter page, but especially for your alcohol markers. And you're going to see this one is more detailed than that first book, but still really, really pretty. Look at that one. Woohoo! That would take a while, huh? So, yeah, that is the Mandalas Volume 2. Then there is the Colorful Flowers Volume 1. So, I don't know if they have a Colorful Flowers Volume 2. I have not seen it. So, um, I've seen a number of pictures on Facebook colored from this particular book. Much heavier black line art in this particular book. I have not colored out of it yet. Um, very pretty. I mean, you could make these very colorful. <laughs> and what I've seen on Facebook, they, they are very colorful. You could use every color under the rainbow. Some are more detailed, some bigger. Would work great with not only my gel pens, but uh, markers. Because this paper is very smooth. I'm not sure how pencils would work because there is not much of a tooth here. I think they're probably meant more for markers. But again, very, very heavy cardstock in these books. So that was the uh, colorful flowers. Then I have mythical and fantasy. I have not colored out of this either. You get um, another blotter page. And yes, as the name implies, is all your mythical fantasy pictures. Really cute. Again, very smooth paper. I would think mainly for markers. Really cute. With her little dragon. Ooh, look at that. She's an octopus. Oh, that's pretty. I like that one. Wonder how markers would blend on this paper. Might have to test that out with some, uh, maybe my Copics, or maybe I'll try out the uh, the uh, color it markers. The thing that I like for blending on the Copics, of course, are the brush tips. <laughs> Their brush tips are second to none. So yeah, this is the mythical and fantasy book. Then they have Colors of Nature. Now, I by no means have all of the Color It books because they have a lot out there. And I am not, you know, interested in all of them, just like all of us. We do not like what the next person likes. So the Colors of Nature set up exactly like their other Color It books. Nameplate page, tips your blotter page, which you just, these are all perforated. So you can either, you know, rip the whole thing out, which is what I do, so it doesn't leave the things in there, or there is a perforated line. And I believe they're all perforated, I think. Um, so yes, this one, as the name implies, is everything about nature. Very, very pretty. Dear. As you can imagine, lots of flowers and butterflies and whatnot. Look at this squirrel. <laughs> That's cute. Bunnies. Fox. Okay, so that's Colors of Nature. 
And the last one I have, and the only reason I bought this one was because, again, their end of the year sale last year, this one was available at a fantastic price. So I went ahead and got it. It's called The Greatest Adventure. Oh, wouldn't that be nice if all the pictures were grayscale for us grayscale lovers? That would be fantastic. Come on, color it. Put out a grayscale coloring book. That would be great. I know a bunch of people would buy that. Nameplate. This is kind of just a, a fun type of book. Um, blotter page. And you'll see what I mean. They have wording on here. Um, I'm not sure if it's, if it's actually... Yeah, I think it's more storybook type of uh, book because it is their adventure. So on each page, it has part of the story. It says, Holly and Joe are so excited. They are going out to the park for a picnic with Mommy and Daddy. So this one could be a child's coloring book, too. Kind of an expensive child's coloring book, but okay. So again, has part of the story up at the top. Very uh, simplistic, much, much easier type of, seems like most of them go this way, much uh, easier type of coloring page. Oh, sure, just when I turn it now, it's going to be the other way. Um, pterodactyl. So everything they find in the park that they went to. Again, continuing on with their story. Rawr. Very cute. So, that one is The Greatest Adventure. All right, that's all the books that I have. So I thought, excuse my reach here, I thought what we would do is take the uh, Volume 1 Mandala book and we would do a color along. And I thought what I would do, and I'm going to put down this blotter page, is I would do this particular mandala and I would of course use my uh, color it glitter gel pen my love okay and I'm going to open up the variety pack also because I will need some probably some colors from that too so let me keep these up here and I'm running out of room here not sure exactly what colors I'm going to be going with yet. Um, and I'll need to zoom you in for this. Is that good enough? Okay. So let's see. What should we start with? I think maybe I'll go with some uh, purples and maybe purples, greens, blues. Hmm. I like to use, especially on mandalas, I like to go with like four colors, maybe five, typically. Again, like I said in my last video, I, I typically use a very limited color palette. Um, and I don't know if we're going to get this whole thing color colored today. I may just do a part one and then I'll do a part two to this particular picture so that we can all color it in together. So let's look at our color chart that we happen to have for our for uh, this particular set of gel pens. And, okay, purple, because purple is my favorite color. I think I will go with, I like Vineyard, or is it Vineyard? Could be Vineyard. And this is out of the gel pen set up here. So let me find Vineyard. That's Purple Joy. Here is Purple Joy. Yeah, oh, that's, okay. Got the wrong set here. No wonder. It's confusing me. Okay, so here is Vineyard or Vineyard. I'm assuming it's Vineyard. Um, let's get a pretty bright green to go with that purple. Um, do I want... Let's see. Peridot or Shamrock. Or we have... Mainland green, spirit green, festive green. Hmm. Why don't we go with shamrock? 
I think that would be pretty with the purple. So we got the darker purple and we got a lighter green. So 244 Shamrock. And again, this is in the regular set. Pardon my arm. Is this Shamrock? Nope, that's Limelight. Well, that's fine, Shamrock. That's Peridot. And so this must be Shamrock. Yes, this one is Shamrock. Okay, then let's find a pretty blue to go with that. Now, considering Vineyard's a little bit darker, maybe we should go a little bit lighter. And I love the blues in this particular set. So let's maybe go with... Hmm, either Glacier or Cerulean. Hmm. Azure. I think I want to stay a little bit lighter. Let's go with, maybe we'll go with, well, I don't want to use it. I've used Glacier quite a bit because I love that light blue. So maybe we will go with Cerulean. So that is C525, Glacier, and I think, yep, so this is the Cerulean. Now what color, I love these three colors together, but what color can we put in that combination that will look nice? Why don't we do what I like to do is I will take a piece of paper, I will swatch out the colors, and then kind of swatch out if I can't really decide on a color because I know what the colors look like because of my color chart. But when I'm looking for a color to go with it, I'll typically, oh, and I smeared them. I typically will uh, put them down on a sheet of paper and then try a couple and just see how they look with it. I was thinking maybe like a, a deep yellow. I don't think... No, there's not really a deep yellow in the other set. So, let's see. Maybe like a 24 carat. That's a pretty color. Let's see what that looks like. Where is the 24 carat? Goldenrod. Let's see. Yes, this is it. So how will that look with the other ones? What do you think? Think that would look okay? Yeah, I guess it'll look okay. Not sure what else, because I don't think I want to throw like a pink in there or... Hmm. Yeah, and I don't want to throw another purple, blue, or green. Brown. No. Oh, so undecided. This is the hardest part of coloring, isn't it? Deciding your colors. As you can tell, I didn't have this planned out. <laughs> I don't think I want to go with an orange. Well, let's just go with the yellow. Let's just go with it. Okay, so now that we have our colors picked out, I can put this back over here. And what should we start with in the center? I a lot of times like to start with a yellow in the middle. I don't know why, but that's typically what I do. Um, so I guess that's what I'm going to do in this case. If uh, this is too shadowy, um, maybe what I'll do, if you can hang on a moment, I will add my ring light if I can find it. Oh, I'm really not prepared today, am I? I just thought of it. I have a ring light that clips to my phone, and maybe that would help a little bit with the glare, especially with uh, coloring on this smooth, it's a little bit shinier paper. With that, yeah, I think that would help a little. Okay, so let's try that. Okay. All right, let's give that a whirl, especially with glitter. Um, matter of fact, I wonder if it would be better without. Now, that's a little too dark. We better leave that on. 
Okay, so it might be a little shadowy today. I apologize. So, how is everyone doing today? I know everybody that does a color in chat starts out their chat like that, right? Does anybody ever answer it down in the just down in the comments? <laughs> just to, kind of seems to be a standard initial question. But like they say, I hope everybody is doing well. I am recording this on Saturday. Now, when I color my mandalas, I do have to turn the book around. So if that bothers anybody, I apologize. I don't want to get you dizzy or anything. Now, even though the sun is shining outside, it is so deceiving because like the majority of the rest of the country, with the exception of California, California, I guess, is having a heat wave. But uh, at least that's what I thought I heard. The rest of the country is in the deep freeze. The polar vortex has hit, I guess, is what they said. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, by Tuesday, I think our high, our high for the day, is supposed to be 10 below. Our wind chills that night are supposed to get between 30 and 40 below zero. That's cold. Even for us here in the northern states, that's cold. And it's going to be all next week that uh, it's supposed to be like this before it starts at least getting above zero. Next week, we're not even for our highs during the day. I don't think we're supposed to get above zero. So, uh, I hate winter. I hate winter. I think I am supposed to be in a southern state. Anne, can I come move down by you or Donna? Any of you that live down there? Any of my subscribers that I don't quite know yet. I'm looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you. I thank you very, very much for subscribing. With uh, Anne's shout out to my channel, I have increased so much. I think I'm up to 270 some now. And at 300, I will be doing another giveaway. It seems like every 100 you get for the first 500 are so monumental. I mean, every single subscriber out there, every one of you, I appreciate so much. But when you hit those, you know, 100 marks up to like 500, and then when you hit like 1,000, you know, it just, it, uh, I'll definitely be doing, I have a number of things for giveaways. So, and I, as I went through my supplies, last night and kind of organized things, I found some more things that I'm going to be giving away as uh, giveaways. And they are non-used. They're, they're like brand new products. I think all I did for a couple of them was doing the swatching out of the colors. It's just things that I really like and I, I hope somebody out there would would like them um it's just i don't use them and uh so i thought i will pass them on to somebody that can give them some love and use i have many many supplies that i have not been using and that is one thing i hope to remedy on this channel is that i will get out a lot of my coloring supplies that I have not used. My All of my beautiful pencils have been sitting there getting neglected. And that was one of my New Year's resolutions. Of course, it was last year, too. Who makes resolutions and keeps them? Especially by the end of January, they're usually out the window. Um, my New Year's resolution last year and this year was to get out my coloring supplies that I have not used in a while. And my fallback all the time when I am stressed, when I just want to sit in my chair and color in the living room, because this is a very nice desk, 
but I don't color here. <laughs> My coloring supplies are not here. I color in the living room where the people are, where the TV is. So I like to just sit curled up in my chair and get out my gel pens and color my either mandalas or if any of you seen my postings on the Facebook coloring groups, I like to do patterns and designs. Geometric patterns are just my all time favorite. And I think they always will be. Even though I'm I'm adding in some other things right now, like I am, you know, trying to get into people. People were never my thing to color at all. I did not like coloring faces, skin. I think because it intimidated the heck out of me. So I just kind of avoided it. But now with my Copics and watching some YouTube videos and stuff, I really, really want to get into that. I have signed up for a number of Copic classes some free and some not free and uh, I want to take those classes I just that was another resolution is because I had signed up for those quite a while ago and I just have never uh, taken them I've never taken the time and now since starting this YouTube channel my weekends are kind of taken up with recording and whatnot so because again, like I stated in my other videos, I have my two-year-old granddaughter all week during the week. Well, Monday through Thursday. And my 11-year-old grandson after school. Now, I could record when he's around, of course, but not little Maddie. I don't think she would let me. Or I'd be talking to her and... And, uh... What not more than I would be talking to you, and I don't think I'd get much coloring done. Let's go on this side now. Again, a little shaky today, so. So what is the weather like you by you? Oh boy, my boyfriend's back already. I like to record when he's not here. I'm just very self-conscious yet talking to you people when he's around. I don't know why, and I'm hoping I can get better at that so I don't feel like I have to record whenever he's not here. Because, <laughs> of course, on the weekends, he's not working, so he is here. I like to get a lot of my recordings done on Friday when I don't have Maddie, and he's not here. But yesterday, I was having mega, mega problems with my printer. I have two laser printers, as I believe I mentioned in my last video. One is a monochrome laser printer, just a, a black and white, and then one is a big color printer that has a copy or scanner. It's got a multi-sheet feeder on top, so if you want to scan in multiple pages or copy, you don't have to put each single sheet on the glass by itself and copy it or scan it, fax it, whatnot. So it's a very nice printer, but I'm having problems with my blank toner cartridge, so I'm kind of waiting on that, and now I'm having problems printing to my monochrome printer. After three hours, I gave up, and I finally called the... They're both brother printers, so I called brother, and yeah, he got me up and running from my laptop I was able to finally print something unfortunately because I was on the my cell phone with him I didn't try printing from my cell phone and nope cannot print from my cell phone and so last night I tried printing something from my laptop again and nope same problem still dead in the water so I guess I'm gonna have to get back on the horn with him Now the one problem with these gel pens is because they are very juicy. Like Ann says, you need juicy markers. Juicy gel pens are nice too. <laughs> but you really, and, and this is true with most gel pens, you really have to be you know, careful so you don't smear them. So you can't go over the top with your hand 
when you've just colored it and laid the color down because yes, you will smear it. So I try to go around where I haven't just recently colored something and I know it's had time to dry. What I do in my geometric, my pattern books is I'll always go from um, the left side of the page and maybe down a little bit and then I'll go across and down a little bit and I'll and I'll do it that way so I'm never on the part of the gel pen that I just colored and so then by the time I get over to the left side down a little bit then the rest of it will be dried the others above it will be dried so yeah hope this turns out okay yeah I think this is definitely going to end up being a two-parter I haven't gotten very far and just going through the color it supplies and books and now just starting this I see I'm over 40 minutes already so I don't want to make this too long and we can always do another color and chat and finish this up oh yeah I think those colors will look nice together yellow I like to a lot of times use as my filler in background but I th well I don't know I guess we'll see I usually like to put paler yellow in in backgrounds but you don't see pale yellow in glitter gel pens so you see them in pastels but I have some of the pastels and neons and metallics and whatnot but I don't know if anybody's seen my post on Facebook I have it in a big art bin case uh, one of those double deeps and then I purchased four marker inserts and I have like over 400 gel pens in that case of one section is all glitter next section is all metallic then all pastel, neons, and then a few regulars, you know, your regular black, regular red. And I do not use them. I only color with my glitter gel pens. So those are sitting there. And so I was, there's over, yeah, I think I said there's over 400 gel pens alone in that. And the art bin case and the marker inserts alone I think came to like over 60 bucks so I was selling the whole kit and caboodle for 75 so essentially you'd be getting like uh, over 400 gel pens for like 15 bucks so if anybody's interested in that let me know hate to see them just sitting there because I don't want them to dry out or anything I mean they've all been capped the majority of them have never been used matter of fact I don't know if any of them have ever been used because I just have so many gel pens and yeah they they are just sitting saying use me use me okay what color should we come with in here because I want to use yellow in the backgrounds probably a, well, I guess yellow can go in here then too okay oh wait a minute that's gonna be up here no I don't want that then because I want to use yellow in the background but it looks like this connects to this and purples right there you see how I think this all out <laughs> um, so I think we'll put the blue in here and then yeah then we can put some of the others out there I am thinking of one of my next videos I am thinking of doing a tour of sorts of my desk here my recording area then I thought I would take you 
on a trip over to my dining room area, which is where my all my supplies and all, well, the majority of my supplies, I should say, and all my coloring books are. I have four eight cube bookcases that are not completely full, but pretty close. And then I have a large uh, supply cabinet of sorts. Um, they're just shelves on top and then there's two doors on the bottom. And I, that's over, not in the dining room, that's somewhere else. So I would take you over there and show you what's all in there too. Some of my marker sets are in there, my pan pastels, all my papers, different types of paper for the printer and whatnot. So would anybody be interested in that tour? Let me know down below. And I can do that. And I've also <laughs> been requested. This is another thing I want to know from you guys. A um, number of people have stated they want to see my entire coloring book collection. <laughs> I'm very nervous to do that. I, you would not believe how many I have, and I'm not going to say. <laughs> Although, I guess if I show them all, you'll find out, won't you? Um, if I do end up showing them all, and you kind of realize how many I have, I will then also show you an app that I use on my phone, or it's also on the internet. So there's an app version and an internet version uh, that you can use on your PC. Um, I'm sure there's an Android version. It's called Library Thing. And it's what I use to keep track of what coloring books I have. You can sort it, and I'll show all this in the app, but uh, you can sort it by artist, you can sort it by book title, date when you've got it. And I, I think it's initially meant for people that read a lot, but it works, works great for us that have, you know, hundreds of coloring books and you can't remember if you already bought it, <laughs> like I have done in the past. Yeah, I know a few of us are guilty of that. So I will, uh, if you're interested, I will go ahead and show that app too. Unfortunately, it does give you your total book count. <clears throat> it does keep track of digital versions too. You can specify what library they're in. So if it's hardcover or paperback or whatever, physical form book, you it is in your library. And if you specify that it's a digital copy, you can put it in your digital library. And in some cases, I have a number, especially the Jade, mostly the Jade Summer books, because when you bought the physical book, you could download the digital version. So I have a number of them that are in both libraries. So you can also see what digital books you have. So I will be more than happy to share that app with you. The thing that's really nice is you don't manually have to enter anything. It is so automatic. All you need is that, what's it called, UPC code? Kind of drawing a blank here. Uh, yeah, the UPC code off the back, the, the bars, it'll scan that, and it puts it in automatically for you. Book title, the author, how many pages, the publisher, um, because it, especially if it's on Amazon, it'll find it because it uses, Amazon is its biggest uh, database. So if it was bought on Amazon, it'll find it. I have only had a few that were not found with this app. And uh, I think it might have been, I, I buy books periodically from Book Outlet. If anybody's heard of Book Outlet, I'm sure you have, um, because they're very discounted books. And I might have had 
one or two of all my books that were not found on there. I think I might have had one of these colored books that was not found either. So then it is kind of a pain to have to manually enter everything. And I do not use the app to do that. I do go on librarything.com, I think is what it's called. And I will enter it in on there because then you want to upload a, a cover photo and, and whatnot. And when this happens, and it doesn't happen very often with these color it gel, gel pens, um, when it stops working, I just give it a flick of my wrist and it typically works. So my boyfriend will see me in the other room and I'll be flicking my wrist. And uh, I'll say, geez, you're gonna flick your hand off one of these times. <laughs> He's funny. So yeah, I can show you that app. Now, if and when, no, and I probably will do it, show you my entire coloring book collection. I've seen other people that had, when they showed their entire coloring book collection, the people, let me get back in the frame, the uh, people stated that they wanted to see, and I'm still not really in frame, am I? Let's get up here, Lisa. They wanted to see just a page or two out of each book. Of course, not complete flip throughs or anything. Um, because, yeah, I wonder if I'm, no, I'm not running out of ink. Because that would take forever. Boy, I do not typically have this problem with these color gel pens, but I'm breaking them up and now I'm having problems. Hmm. At least let me get through this. No, and it's not going to. Let me shake it up good. And it's not going to. What the heck? And I don't have my refills here. Typically what I'll do then is I will take it out. And I may blow in the end real hard. Or another thing you can do is you can take it and you can tap it. Sometimes that will do it. And I will try a number of things before I toss <laughs> the refill. And worse comes to worse, and I have only had to do this a few times. It looks like it's starting to want to work. Um, as I will take a lighter to the tip because it looks like it's getting clogged up a little bit. Hmm. It wants to work, but it's saying, no, I'm going to be difficult for you on camera. Okay, I am going to leave, I guess, the rest of the blue alone, and I'm going to get this gel pen working off camera. Because I think, like I said, we're just going to fill in these, and then I'll leave the rest of the picture for another color and chat. So we will just pretend that this is all colored. And let's decide what we want to do next and with what colors. I think I'll color this all in the same color. And because I want to do these, let's do that first. Let's color the what I call the fill in yellow. And then we'll kind of see what looks the best. for the rest of it. I don't know about you, but when I color, I can color great up and down, but coloring sideways, no, not so good. So that's why I turn my coloring books an awful lot. Okay, is there any other yellows I think I need in there? Why don't we, while we're just working on this one, instead of me flipping you around constantly and making you dizzy, I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead in here. I think because green's way in there, we'll color this green on each side. Of 
Hope I'm not boring you with coloring with my gel pens. I was thinking of doing a color and chat and coloring my first and foremost love, my uh, geometric patterns, but I thought, gosh, who's going to want to watch that? <laughs> I figured that would bore you to tears. I guess it's not a whole lot different than coloring out of a mandala, though, or coloring a mandala. It's just the design in a mandala goes in a circle, right? Oh, I heard Bob just come in with Bella, my dog. It is hell having a dog when it is this flipping cold. Oh, and I think she thinks so too. Yeah, she's not real happy. And she typically so looks forward to her walks. But yeah, she doesn't get much walking when it's this cold out. Usually when Bob gets home from work in the afternoon, he will take her for a walk and... Our mailbox is up the street a little ways in a in a bank of boxes. I don't have it delivered to my door. Um, but, uh, oh, and <laughs> here I was going to make them blue, so I'm just going to leave those empty, too. Um, but, yeah, that should look okay. Let's go on to this one. Um, so, yeah, he'll take Bella for her walk, but... Yeah, it's too cold for walks for both human and beast. As they say in Rudolph. <laughs> and so she just gets to go outside periodically to go do her duty. Her number one and number two. And she's going to have to be satisfied with that. I don't think she really wants to go for much of a walk either. I mean, she, like I said, she loves her walks, but uh, freeze her little tootsers off. She is just a toy Yorkie Pomeranian, so she's just a teeny little thing with very teeny legs and teeny tootsies. So, yeah, it's not good for her to be out there either when it is this cold. It's been so cold now, once we get above zero again, it's going to be a heat wave. My gosh, if we would actually get back into the 30s, people would be putting on shorts. <laughs> Only in Wisconsin. Do you ever do, hear that about your state? We have so many things. So many jokes, so many uh, cartoons or, or what have you, and you hear this only in Wisconsin. Do you hear stuff like that in your state or in your country? I shouldn't include just the United States because with the giveaway I had last time, I found out I do have a couple of international subscribers, and thank you very much. I hope to, at some future time, be able to have a, an, a giveaway that will include my international subscribers. I know there's only a couple of you right now, but still, I appreciate you. I keep forgetting to look up and see where I'm at. Oh, yeah, I should mention, you know, I, I would always say, you know, I had such a problem. Um trying to figure out where I was by looking up at my phone and, you know, trying to see if I'm on frame and where I'm at. I found um, how to show it on my iPad. So, yeah, see? So, yeah, I'm kind of zoomed in, but, yeah, I have it on my iPad. See all them fingerprints that I got to wipe off? <laughs> so I have my iPad sitting over here. Unfortunately, it's not full screen. Though. I wish it covered the whole iPad screen because that really would show me where I was at. So it's, you know, very small, but it it does help me out. I can just glance over there at my iPad 
instead of glancing up here at my phone to see where I'm at because again I'm recording from up above and so I'm not recording from the side so I cannot see what I'm recording without cranking my neck and looking up so really helps with uh, finding this out about the iPad and the other thing I wanted to mention is you know I was complaining about that flash drive that I really wanted to get you know really wanted to work because it plugs into my iPhone I can transfer transfer this video and thumbnail pictures whatever onto the flash drive and then so it's got the lightning port and then on the other end you push the other end out and it's got a USB port on it and you plug that into your computer and you can then copy them you know you'll have access to those files that you copied onto it from your phone I thought oh perfect perfect because I want to start using movie maker on uh, the computer right now I've been using iMovie on my phone <laughs> to make any edits to add things to make my thumbnails and you know to, to just be and I screwed this up oh my gosh well I guess two let's see one two one two one two one two okay what we're gonna do <laughs> we're gonna make two in green with purple and then we'll do two with purple and green <laughs> even though now this purple is going to run into this and that's one thing that drives me crazy i do not like having when two shapes are the same color especially if it's dark because you can't see where one color ends and the next one begins so yeah if i do two green two purple two green two purple yeah that should work even though Arr talking and not concentrating on what I'm doing. I'm sure nobody else has ever done that, right? And there are some times, I'm sure, we all have had epic fails that either go right in the garbage or like me because I don't take anything out of my coloring books to color. Um... They're just kind of left in the book, never to be seen again. Many times, well, I shouldn't say many times, because like I said, the majority of the time, I finish my, oh boy, I am really screwing this up, because now that was going to be blue. Hmm, <sighs> what are you doing, Lisa? So now I'll have to make these blue, oh boy. I can just see me screwing this up more in the future. I don't typically do this. It's got to be because I'm on camera. Still kind of nervous with recording. I'm getting a little bit better. I'm not shaking so hard. <laughs> There's those first few videos. Oh my gosh. But then the more YouTube videos I watch of color tubus and the more at ease that I see them I'm like okay how can they do that and <laughs> why can't I be more like that okay where am I at and so yeah I'm I'm getting a little bit better at not being quite so nervous trying to come up with Okay, what am I going to talk about today? I don't want to bore you people to tears and I don't want to just sit here and color and not say anything because that really would just be a color and not a color in chat. Is that what color alongs are called? What's the difference between a color along and a color in chat? Is a color along where they have the same picture as you or the same book and they're coloring a picture while you're coloring? Is that what a color along technically is versus a color in chat where like this, you're just jabbering away while you color and I'm sure you people are not just sitting there watching me color. At least, God, I hope you're not. I'm assuming you are doing other things, probably like what I do when I listen to color and chats. I'm coloring myself. 
glance up once in a while, especially if they're pointing something out or maybe I'm coloring along and they said something that I'm like, oh, what was that? So then I'll back it up a little bit. Do you guys ever speed up when you're watching your videos? I typically don't, unless it's somebody uh, that talks slower like me. <laughs> I'm not exactly a fast talker. -er -er -er. You could probably speed me up. I have to laugh, though. The few times I did that, the people, I mean, you just sound like chipmunks. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, once I start coughing, I have to continue coughing. Okay, yeah, I see we're over an hour now already. Wow, where does the time go? So we'll just finish going around here with this. See, now we're screwing this up. I'm having a much harder time remembering what goes where. Just go around this circle part and finish this up. Okay, let's go with the yellow again. So yeah, if you could please let me know down below a couple of things. Number one, if you would like to see a tour of my desk slash recording area and where I keep all my coloring supplies and books. Give you that tour if you guys are interested in it. And number two, if you want to see my entire coloring book collection. Okay, so now we're going to do green on the outside. Okay. Um, and if you would, and if so, would you like to see just a page or two out of each book? Or just the book itself and move on. Please let me know answers to those questions in the comments below. And also, if there's anything else that you guys would be interested in me doing, you would like to see me do, like uh, any how-to videos I did. Uh, one of my previous videos was uh, adding foiling like this would be a good one to do. Um, you would again would have to copy it over on a laser printer in order to do it because like I stated in that video it has to be printed on a laser printer um, and not an inkjet and so you know it was adding foiling really shiny metallic foiling to your coloring book pages that I thought some people would be interested in so you know, by all means, if if I can, if there's something you want to see with some type of supply, there's a good chance I might have it. <laughs> I have many, many, many different types of markers and pen or markers and pencils and pan pastels. I want to start playing with my pan pastels too, rather than just using them for backgrounds because now. Um, it was not too long ago. I think it was near the end of last year sometime. Sometime right before Christmas, I think. Um, November, maybe. I had gotten my third set of pan pastels. So I have the tints, which are the pretty pastel colors. Then the, these are all sets of 20. So, yeah, the tint set of 20, the true tone set of 20, which is your, the real color. So, you know, you have your red, which is the true red, and then a tint would be like a pinkish color. Um, and then this last set that I bought are the darks. So they are the shades little bit gray thrown in there so the red again using that as an example would be a much deeper red or shouldn't say much deeper because 
the set that I don't have are called the extra darks. Those are the much deeper shades. So I do have the tints, the true tones, or I think it's something like that they're called. Real tone, true tone, something like that. And then I just bought the um, darks. And then I also, and this is what I bought, oh, many years ago. The very first set I had gotten of the Pan Pastels was the, oh, what are they called? Pearlescent, I think. Pearlescent set. And they're beautiful. I love them. They're like pastel colors, but they have a real glimmer to them. Glittery. We all love that glitter and glimmer, don't we? And so I would use them on uh, my backgrounds a lot. And I have a lot of stencils. And that's what I always used. Come on, Adair, I don't want to smear it. I uh, would use that for my backgrounds. I would use my pan pastels at that time, my iridescent ones and use a stencil so if you have like a cloud stencil you could put blue clouds in the background or gosh I'll have to look through all my stencils and maybe we'll do a, a demo of that we could walk through that using the uh, the stencils and doing backgrounds with the pan pastels but you could apply the same principle to any pastels that you have whether it be your stick pastels, you know, your, your chalkier pastels, um, or whatever type of pastels you have. And we could, uh, yeah, do a video on that and do some backgrounds. Of course, I wouldn't have that many pictures colored ahead of time to actually do them on a picture, but we could do them on blank sheets of paper and go through the different different types of stencils I have um, you know a little bit of what's available out there and how neat they look with pan pastels but like I said any pastels and we should be done pretty soon you guys getting sick of me yet I don't know how some of you do it when you do like these, you know, two, three hour color and chats. Anne likes her long ones and I I just love listening to her. For those very few of you that don't know her yet, she's Anne from A Colorful Life and she's the one who gave me the shout out. So I will give her a shout out. Not that any of you probably are, you know, not subscribed to her already because many of you got sent over here from her. So she's got many, many, many subscribers already. And she deserves it. So funny. Okay, so we got one more purple one here to do. Again, I thank you all very, very much for subscribing. And I am heading towards that 300 mark. I am going to have a couple of collabs coming up in the future. Um, next month, I will be with Zoe Archer and Color Creatively in their Sun Life Drawing collab. And as you know, if you've seen my past video, and if not, you can go ahead and look through my videos. Um, I did a whole video on my Sun Life Drawing collection. 
So I think I may have a book or two to pick from. So that's going to be fun. I'm going to enjoy that. And then, in I believe it's June, Color Creatively, and I think Zoe might get in on this one too, um, we are going to do a collab, and I believe we decided on our subject matter, which was going to be fairies. I know there are so many collabs going on um, after. Now I'm getting, you know, into this recording and whatnot a little bit more, and I'm more aware of the collabs. Um, Shalene from, is it the Coloring Book Nook? Puts together a list of everybody that's, you know, doing the collabs, who's doing what, when. And she just put out a video, I believe it was this morning. No, last night. I might have watched it last night. Um, and in that, she listed all the collabs that are going on through the year. And I'm like, oh my heavens. How does a person keep that straight? Um, I did go over to her blog, and I actually made a printout. <laughs> but, of course, that's that's going to update um, as people put out additional collabs. So, I think that's as far as we're going to go today. Like I said, our time, yeah, about an hour and 15 minutes. So, it's probably my longest video yet. And I wonder why, when I try to zoom back out now, after a while, it's like my remote that I showed you guys that I used to zoom in and out. It's like it shuts itself off or something. I don't know. It, it must be like after a certain time period or something, it goes in auto shut off, which I really don't like. Oh, there it worked. <gasps> Yay! I thought maybe I'd have to reconnect it to Bluetooth and everything. So, okay, we will leave this here, and then I will finish up in a part two. I am going to get that blue pen working, if it kills me. Cerulean. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I do have a refill for it, uh, like I said. So, um, I do want to also put a reminder out there that my giveaway for the 200 subscriber mark... Um, to give away this Debbie McComer Come Home to Color coloring book ends on Wednesday at midnight Central Standard Time. You can go back and look at that video for specifics. Um, so make sure if you want to enter that and, and get that book, you uh, enter that by midnight on Wednesday. And then I will be doing a video on Thursday and showing the winner. Um, rather, this next time when I do a giveaway, rather than having to go through the trouble of assigning numbers um, and keeping track of all the people and who's getting what number and whatnot, I found a better way, and I should have done this from the beginning because I've seen other people do this. Um, you don't assign numbers. You just, um, when the challenge is over, or, or the giveaway is ordered over, I should say, you go to... Um, it's a random.org, but it's for YouTube comments. And you just enter the URL of that particular giveaway YouTube video. And it will check all the comments. And it will filter out any duplicate comments even. You know, if one individual commented more than once or, or whatnot. And then it will pick a winner through that. So for future videos, future giveaways, I will not be assigning numbers because it, it, I don't have that many subscribers right now, so it's not terribly inconvenient. But I'm hoping in the future when I do giveaways um, that I will be having more people entering my giveaways. So it would be much harder to keep track of all that then. So, again, once I get to 300 subscribers, and I think I'm maybe 25 away from that, I will be doing another giveaway, and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be giving away. It may be, I have a Millie Murata book here. I also have, I know a number of people have liked this book. They have a 
I've seen a number of people coloring out of here is I love my hair. I have that one to give away. I do have some supplies to give away, some Jane Davenport supplies, actually. And I know a lot of you people out there love your Jane Davenport. I love them, too. I just have not been using them. So I decided that would be great. Um, I may save that, uh, the Jane Davenport's, for a big giveaway at 500 subscribers because I will be doing a much larger giveaway at that time. So we'll just kind of have to play it by year. So at 300, I guess, um, it will be a book. Um, I do have a couple of Christina McAllister books um, to give away if uh, people would be interested in that. Kind of let me know. Um, what do you think I should do for my next giveaway? Which which kind of book? Um, I know a lot of people love the Christina McAllister books. I have one other one of hers. These just, I don't know, I guess they weren't up my alley. Um, and if you, I know you said there were a couple you didn't have yet. If you need either one of these, Lost Lumina or the Lumina Chronicles, let me know and I'd be more than happy to send it to you. You probably have these two though. Um, if not, let me know, Anne. Um, so, I guess that will be it for now. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you're notified of any future videos, especially giveaway videos. I hope everyone has a terrific day and, as always, happy coloring.